Well, hey, it's been a very long time since I made one of these videos, to say the least. There are a lot of reasons, but they're not very important right now. I do appreciate hearing from some of you when I kind of disappeared, though. Um, so I'm back again, just at least briefly, because I want to show you that there's been some significant progress. So look at this. There's a PCB version of the mite. It's alive. Um, so let's see. Uh, in order to get here, I had to start with a schematic. I've been promising a schematic forever, as some of you know. So why did it take me so long? Well, the first thing is every time I picked up KiCad to work on it, I ran in horror from its user interface. It's just a nightmare. But I knew if I wanted a printed circuit board, I was going to have to get the schematic together. So I sucked it up and plunged back in. The other attitudinal problem that I had to solve for myself was I had many extensions in mind and different kinds of ideas for new things I wanted to try out. So I could never really decide what should be on a PCB. It took me an embarrassingly long time to realize that the right answer was none of them. The best move was to start with a PCB that was as close as I could manage to the wire wrap version. It's really the only sensible way to debug it. I didn't manage to keep the, it to exactly the same in the end, but it's pretty nearly. Um, which means, of course, this is just the first PCB of what will eventually be a series trying out different ideas. So anyway, the short version is I now had a schematic. It's online at the link in the description in case anybody wants to see it. And having a schematic meant that I could start to build it out as a PCB. Now, I know nothing about how to do PCB design, so that took a little while. My design would probably horrify anybody with any expertise, especially since I let the auto router do all the trace layout. I checked it over carefully afterwards, but I don't really know what I'm looking for, so I don't think that was particularly helpful. Um, now, I'd imagine that getting the decent routing was going to be the big hurdle, but it wasn't. The hardest thing was identifying all the right footprints for the components that I've gradually accumulated bit by bit over years. And so tracking down what I bought five years ago to solve a particular problem was not always easy. Think about the reset button, for instance. Where did that come from? What were its precise dimensions? I have to specify them and for the footprint on the board or the power LED, like what kind of LED is that? Specifying a board also means specifying a full detailed bill of materials with absolute precision. Not just any 0.1 microfarad capacitor, but this 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Figuring all that out was a real pain. Still, it all went off to PCB away, and in less than a week, I had the boards in my hands. So this package just arrived literally half an hour ago, um, and given how it's labeled, there's no surprise where it's from. It's from PCB Way, um, which, as you undoubtedly know, is a quick turnaround manufacturer of printed circuit boards. And so that's what's inside it here. These are my first circuit boards for the Mite, my 6502 computer. Um, they're also the first circuit boards I've ever made. Um, and so this is all very experimental. Um, and that means, I mean, it's probably true with any circuit board that it's not going to work the very first time. And for these, the very first ones I've ever made, it's sure to go horribly, horribly wrong. Or I'm doubtedly, undoubtedly made all sorts of errors on here. So I hope I've worked myself out a detailed enough test plan to figure out how to actually put these together and to debug them. Um, that again, being something that I've not done before. So it'll be a new adventure as this whole project has been since the very start. So that's the next round. I'm very pleased to have these in my hand. Um, the first step um, in getting these together for me is going to be to clear off some space on my bench because it's currently all occupied by um, what's growing into a small museum of uh, retro computers. So once I've got that done and we uh, can come back to these, I will obviously keep you updated. The first board didn't quite work, of course, they never do, but fortunately my errors were pretty easy to bodge around. I made a typo on the schematic that mixed up an address line with a data line, and that was kind of a mess. But lifting a pin and hooking it up by hand fixed that. I'd also made a mistake with clock distribution. Um, a bodge wire fixed that. Um, I'd missed a couple of pull-up resistors that I thought I could get away without having and gotten some of the ports backwards, um, but I could fix all those with adapter boards that went in between the main PCB and the external units. All these changes were incorporated into the version 1.1 board, which works just fine all by itself. In case you're wondering when you look at the video, the green board is the first one, the 1.0, and the blue board is the 1.1. The schematics and the Gerbers that I put online are all for the debug board, of course. So what are some of those future projects? 
Well, I have two separate SPI setups on this uh, board, one for the SD card and one for the display. Um, there are different pieces of software and they're in different ports. So clearly these need to be integrated both in software and in hardware. So I want to have this operate as a real SPI bus to which I can attach multiple devices. It's relatively easy to do, but I'll need to add some tri-state buffers since not all SPI devices buffer them or tri-state themselves. That's definitely going to be on the next board though, not this one. Some of you may remember that I tried to make a TMS9918A video processor work in this computer without success. Um, I eventually realized that was because I had wire wrap problems and some flaky connections. So now that I have a more stable platform, I think I'd like to go back to that, probably using the Pico 9918 um, that Troy Shrapnel has been working on, which is a pretty nice piece of kit. There's a lot of software projects I've been thinking about as well, including a new IDE for fourth, because the way I've been writing fourth code has been kind of annoying me. I've been thinking about that, as well as a resident development setup for a language like C or Pascal. Back when I was a kid and had a BBC Micro, I wrote a pretty decent Pascal compiler for it, so I know that's doable. I also want a case for this computer, which is one of those other things that is going to take a while because 3D printing is yet another thing that I know nothing about. So now that the hardware is in a reasonably sensible place, I think I'm going to close out this video series and just draw a line under them and say, for the moment, they're done. I've been a little embarrassed at how at the long gaps that I've left sometimes between one video and the next. And so the easiest way to, to prevent that from happening is just to say, OK, we're done for the moment. Um, I'm still going to be working on the project. There's always more to do um, in the best possible way. And so when it stops being a hardware project, it starts being a software project for a while and then vice versa. Um, so I'm going to keep on working on things. And if there's ever something that's sort of particularly interesting or exciting, I may make another video and post it so that people can track what's going on. But in the meantime, I think this, I'm going to wind these things up. So the last thing to do is just to say thank you to everyone who has liked and subscribed, sent me an email or left comments. I've learned a lot from many of you and I've really appreciated the encouragement. And perhaps a special shout out to Larry who actually downloaded the software and has been running it on his own machines. But that's a particular honor and I really appreciate it. But I appreciate all the comments and feedback I've gotten from people. So thank you for keeping me uh, um, enthused about this. Uh, good luck with your own projects if you're doing something similar. Um, so yeah, goodbye and good luck.